Have you ever witnessed someone go crazy? What's the story? Yes, myself. Over a period of about nine months, I gradually started getting more and more paranoid about certain things. It eventually got to the point where I was hearing things, like people I knew, talking and imagining things that were going on behind my back that simply were not happening. It caused a lot of stress between me and anyone I had to be around. I did not want to participate in family gatherings or anything that involved more than one or two people because I would feel like they were conjuring behind my back with me there. If that makes any sense, it was all a confabulation, to say the least. Or was all of it? I'm still not convinced. I started trying to explain these things to people I was around and trusted most, like my boyfriend and parents. Their encouragement was that I needed to make an appointment with a counselor, which I had already decided was my best choice. This all ensued after a family Super Bowl get-together where I was extremely anxious about going to begin with. Then on the way there, something came across me suddenly. I felt like I had been drugged and I was sure someone had put something in the beer I was drinking, or had somehow administered something to me without me knowing. This is the part I still can't seem to understand. How do you feel under the influence without taking anything? This feeling occurred two or three more times, among other things. After the first, I would literally feel like I was out of it suddenly, without taking any substances at all, which, I guess could be a good feeling had it not been so scary. I do drink beer occasionally, but that's it. Eventually, I had an appointment with the counseling service. I met with two of the counselors that would be working together with me to make sure I was comfortable working with them first. I was so relieved and grateful to have someone to help me and put me on the right track to dealing with this. I was eager to do whatever it might take to help myself. After lots of to the point Q&A and discussion, my symptoms were classified as a type of psychosis and later, narrowed down to persecutory psychosis. I was in denial and somewhat shocked to hear this, but willingly accepted the diagnosis because it described exactly what was happening to me perfectly. They offered me to take part in their Navigate program a comprehensive evidence-based program designed to provide early and effective treatment for patients, usually from ages 18, 25, experiencing the first episode psychosis. After about two or three months of appointments and getting started with this, my symptoms were off and on and seemed to be decreasing. I think because I now had an actual explanation for what had been happening, I was learning to rationalize situations better and differentiate between what was real and what was just in my mind. I was doing good and felt so much better, but then, Something happened one night, I still try to figure out what started it and how it worked my mind into such a twisted mess but, I was home alone with my two and four year old children. I started having all of these paranoid thoughts, too hard to explain now, and I had been starting to have auditory hallucinations, which I tried to ignore seeing how no one was there, other than my kids. I was waiting for my boyfriend to come home from work, I was in the bedroom changing my kids for bed when he arrived and came in the door. I could see the door from where I was in the bedroom and I had started having visual hallucinations at this point. When he walked through the door, it was like I could see a greenish colored silhouette of someone walking with him. I just remember feeling so scared and like there was someone with him and they were going to hurt me, which I'm sure he would never do, but I had this in my mind. After a few minutes of him asking what was wrong and getting mad at me for acting crazy and not talking, I finally just went into a total meltdown that I could not control, crying, shaking with fear, and too terrified to even move. Look or even speak to anyone. He called my parents to come to our house and I was the same way with him too. They called 911. They had no idea what was wrong or how to help me. When the rescue squad personnel came in, I was sitting on the edge of the bed, my mom just sitting there holding me because I was so traumatized with unexplainable fear. They wanted to check my blood and blood pressure first off and I would not let them touch me and I knew these people, seeing how we live in such a small area. Finally, they just asked if I would get in the ambulance myself and go to the hospital to be checked out, which I was willing to do. I had it in my head that they were not who they said they were and that they were not really doing what they said. When I got in the ambulance, I remember thinking they were putting me in a helicopter, like med flight, because I thought something had happened to me that I didn't know about. Although I knew the ambulance was at my house and in my driveway, once we left for the hospital, I did not know where I was. When I arrived at the hospital, which is fairly small and I'm pretty familiar with, I did not recognize anything and I believed I was being taken somewhere other than where they were telling me. I felt like I had been picked up and dropped into a video game or movie where once everyone had to leave the room. I was going to be left somewhere in this hospital and would have to find my way out before something terrible would happen. I was so confused and so scared, but embarrassed too because I knew how I must have looked to everyone else. Looking for any comfort I could get mentally, searching for any reason that might make me feel better. I began to believe this, that this was all because I was dying or that I had just died and God was protecting me from seeing the bad stuff going on, which surprisingly, started to help. 
I just silently prayed and kept telling myself God was there and would get me through. I was admitted to the hospital and they kept me there for four long days. I was so sedated after coming into the ER as combative and delusional as I was, I barely knew anything that went on the whole time I was there. Other than recognizing a few people that stopped by to visit. After being released from the hospital, I was still confused about everything for about a week and a half. What I have written here is all I can remember about the whole experience, although it seems like a million things were going on the whole time. It was so scary and a horrible thing for me and my family to have to deal with. It actually ended up being a life-changing experience. I have changed so much due to all of this happening and feel like I gained a new perspective on life altogether. It also helped me mature in my faith. But that's a whole other story. Since that incident, four months ago, I've not had any more episodes with psychosis. I learn more and more about dealing with it every day and still try to figure out what happened on that night that set everything off. I still see my counselors regularly and participate more in church and am more active in my faith than I used to be, which also helps.